But anyway, I started to like learn the power of food and I started to realize like, oh, there's all these different companies in different countries that have straight up banned certain ingredients because of their effects on human behavior that we may or may not even fully understand. And so like that for me was a huge mindset shift because I was like, I got to pay more attention to what I eat and not from the perspective of, oh, my weight or people think I'm fat. No, no. From literally just my mental, emotional performance. And so once I did that, man, then next thing I knew, I just like, all of a sudden I started exercising all of a sudden, you know, I always had sleep problems throughout my entire life. All of a sudden I started to work on my sleep. I started to sleep well for the first time. All of a sudden I started to learn how to meditate. I started to learn all these different habits. But for me, like one of the biggest uh, starts to my journey was looking at the food that I ate, which I sort of stumbled on by accident, but I'm really glad that I came across it because I think it's something that really helped like my brain and my biochemistry just establish like some sort of a foundation for them to me start to build habits and just focus on like the most basic things, which I mean, I don't know about you, but I personally was never taught about the impacts of any of this stuff or on mental health at all. And so it was like very illuminating to realize this and realize how like your choices with a fork, whether you know it or whether you don't know it or you have access or you don't have access, it's not just about your waistline. It's also about like the state of your brain, which nobody ever taught me. So it's very interesting. It's really interesting. And there's, there's a lot more research now into gut health links to mental health. And, mm. and I also like, you know, your, your personal story there of, you know, awareness, education, like, you know, because as you say, we don't necessarily get educated on, on mental health or nutrition or finances or anything that, that <laughs> meaningful, right? Um, <laughs> we don't get educated on hardly anything. Um, but, but, you know, so, you know, going down that sort of, you know, journey of you educating yourself. And then I think what's a really interesting point in your journey is then you found like the ones, the one thing, right? I think so many people sort of go down that rabbit hole of Googling or searching for YouTube videos. And, and then, and then they're kind of, I don't know where to start. It becomes overwhelming. Yeah. They fall back into that habit where for you, by the sounds of it, that nutrition part was really key. And then when you got that down, it was like, okay, exercise, okay, meditation, and then everything else sort of on top of that. Um, you know, can you share a couple of bits? Because just because I'm interested yeah. on, on the nutrition side, what was the key things for you there? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest things was um, understanding that, uh, like, you have to eat more dietary fat. Um, so obviously, you know, I don't, I don't believe that there's a universal healthy diet for everybody. I think everybody's different. Um, but I think again, again, I'm not sure if it's the same way in Europe, but in the, in the U S now it's starting to be reversed because people are starting to understand, but before everything was fat free, everything had no fat. Everyone was told, Hey, if you eat something that's, that has fat, even healthy fat, um, then you're going to die. And, and, you know, all this stuff. And then in turn, companies remove the fat and just add sugar and add chemicals, <laughs> which then really hurts your mental health. Um, and so for me, literally just starting to eat like sources of dietary fat for the first time were, were huge. So like eating different kinds of fish, avocados, nuts, eggs, um, even things like oysters, beef liver, understanding the power of like certain nutrients and compounds that your brain needs. Uh, that was huge. And then the other part too, um, and, and I, re I recommend this too, in terms of like social anxiety is like really just trying to learn more about your gut microbiome. And I know it's very complicated. There's so many different levers. It's, it's always changing. Um, but one of the biggest reasons why I'm sure, you know, is because, um, you know, it's not hundred percent, but scientists basically think that a lot of the factors that go into influencing how our like brain processes and goes through a specific neurotransmitter called serotonin that has that does a lot of different things in your body from regulating your mood to regulating your your appetite to your sleep um, to even like some social attributes as well. And so a lot of the times with social anxiety, there's like a huge um, issue when it comes to like serotonin. And a lot of the times, like uh, I think it's something like 80, 85, 90 percent of like the indirect data that your brain uses to generate serotonin comes from your gut microbiome and the nerves that connect from your gut to your brain. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's all different levels to that, but aside from like nutrition and, and eating more fat, of course, make sure you eat like vegetables, eat green things too. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that when you actually eat and you digest, 
you have to be in the present moment. And I know for me, like, I never really did like drugs or alcohol growing up. And so for me, like my vice was either like video games or food. And so I would remember that as a kid, I would, if I was depressed, if I was anxious, if I was whatever, you know, I'd go down to the fast food place and I'd buy this stuff. I'd buy these bags of candy and then I would get home and I would just like eat, 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 just to sort of like numb my emotions and my feelings away. And like, they've actually done studies and, and anybody who has like any sort of a, like a digestive health issue, they now are starting to understand that like the state of your mind when you eat is actually very, very important. Because if you're sort of like in this automatic, like stress, like, hey, just give me the food so I can scarf it down my mouth and not really be there mindfully and just sort of use it as a drug, that heavily impacts like your digestion and heavily impacts your gut. And so um, like a lot of different traditions, a lot of different religions, they also, they're like, hey, before you eat, make sure to give thanks or pray. Mm -hmm. And like, it turns out there's kind of a reason for that. And it's mm -hmm. because like people have known, like whenever you eat, you have to relax your entire body down, you know? And so aside from like nutrition, eating the healthy fats, eating the right kinds of fiber, of course, like trying to remove sugar, uh, artificial chemicals. Um, on top of that, like making sure that when you eat, um, your body and your mind is in a calm place that will that will greatly help your gut and then the last thing too that i've learned is um you know there's all there's all this new stuff now like there's there's so many new companies there's so many new there's like an entire revolution that's happening in the food and beverage industry it's happening very slow for sure um but there's all these new companies now that are like creating truly healthy alternatives. Sometimes they're marketed as healthy alternatives, but they're not really. Um, for things that people, that that's not good. So for example, like, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, by the way. For example, like growing up, dude, I drank like a two liter Coke like every other day. And like throughout my journey, I stopped drinking soda, but there's this company, I'm not sure if it's available in Europe. It's called Olipop. I don't know if you've heard of them. Wow. O-L-I-P-O-P. And so basically like they've made soda, has no sugar, has no artificial chemicals, no preservatives. And inside of the soda, like inside of the drink, it has nine grams of plant fiber. And it literally has like nine different supplements and plant-based ingredients that are very good for your gut microbiome. So mm -hmm. like there's things like that. There's like these different kinds of ice creams. There's all this stuff now that you can like eat a healthy diet and just enjoy life at the same time, you know? And so I think I'm, that's very, very, very important because for me, like ever since I got more serious about my food and my nutrition, that's actually where I started to actually enjoy food more because what I realized is when you're consuming like an American standard based diet, what's happening is you're actually numbing out your taste buds. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but like a lot of people who never eat any like natural based foods, you'll give them a fruit. And they'll be like, oh, this is disgusting. They're like, oh, I would never eat that. And a lot of the times it's because when you are consistently consuming processed foods, junk foods, it literally changes your taste buds in your tongue. And so like for me, what I realized is I'm actually able to literally taste food better, the less unhealthy food that I eat and the more healthy food. And so it's very much like a paradox and it definitely helps you. So I think that's some of the biggest thing. And then also if anybody like Googles my name um, and like types in gut microbiome after, I also have written different resources and, and made different videos about it too for people who want more information.